So remember that time that I said I like to use my benchtop bandsaw for small stuff and my bigger bandsaw for bigger stuff? I was talking to my friend at Grizzly and he asked me what I could use in my shop. I had long wanted to upgrade my bandsaw and I saw this as the perfect opportunity. See, I bought my old 14 inch Grizzly bandsaw manufactured in 1994 on Craigslist always knowing I'd eventually move up to a bigger saw. And talking to my friend, he said they'd come a long way in bandsaw design in the last 23 years. He thought he had something I'd love. Unfortunately, my driveway isn't suited for freight deliveries, so I had to drive to the freight terminal, which is located in the Shenandoah Valley, whereas I'm in the Piedmont of Central Virginia. Colloquially, we call the trip going over the mountain. But I was incredibly stressed because it had rained every day for the last week, and cast iron and moisture don't play nicely together. I was so relieved when I saw the saw was covered in plastic under the shipping crate and I couldn't wait to get it into the shop. Once I got back, what I thought was going to be an easy transfer into the shop turned out to be a little more tricky. The saw wouldn't fit through the door while it was still in the shipping crate. So I cut the top off the crate. Still no dice, so I called my buddy Harris to see if he could give me a hand. While Harris was on his way, there was still a threat of rain and to get the saw off the crate I needed to remove the plastic to get to the shipping bolts. So I threw together the universal mobile base as fast as I could. Enter Harris. He and I were able to wrestle the 357 pound monster onto the base and I thanked Harris immensely and sent him on his way. In the hurry of everything, I didn't pay attention to the orientation of the wheels. The base should have been rotated 90 degrees, and without my strong friend, I had to get clever. I used a ratchet strap over a glue lamb beam in my basement to hoist up the saw as much as I could, then threw some 2x4 blocks under the saw as spacers. Ah, what a bonehead mistake. With that issue fixed, I degreased the table with mineral spirits, then applied some Bowshield T9 to prevent rust. Well, it's supposed to. The bandsaw came with the blade already installed, which I needed to take off to install the table, but first I needed to add the bolt that acts as a stop for the table. Then just bolted the table right on. Time to get down to business. I reinstalled the blade and was blown away by how easy it was. You don't have to remove any blade guards and there's a quick release tensioner so you don't have to spin that wheel a million times. The fence rail installed with one bolt and two hand knobs. How smart is that? You can adjust for blade drift without any tools. The auxiliary fence has two positions, one for resawing and one for small work. For me, it will likely live in the resaw position since I've got my benchtop bandsaw for small work. This was the third time I'd used bow shield and the third time it's failed. I still managed to get some rust, so I applied a classic paste wax and then let that dry. While that was drying, I added the power cord out. I visited two electrical supply houses looking for what the manual calls S-type cord, only to find it at the home improvement store under 14.3 service cable, sold by the foot. 
After wiring a new 220 volt receptacle, I plugged it in and made sure it was getting power. The blade guides are bearings instead of cool blocks like my old saw and they are so much easier to adjust. And I just tighten the screws finger tight. The way I've always adjusted for blade drift is to draw a line down a board with a jointed edge and cut the line freehand. Stop the cut about halfway through and mark the edge of the board, then match that line with the fence. On this saw, two hand knobs. Brilliant. I tested my results on that same small piece of scrap. Perfect. Then I wanted to really test the saw's limits and precision. This is a piece of about 8 inches of red oak. The blade didn't drift at all. I seriously can't find one thing wrong with this machine. It's like they took all of the gripes over the years and fixed everything and put it into one machine. I mean, toolless blade changes, uh, hinged doors, which may not seem like a big deal, but it's a, it's my old bandsaw was always a pain to change the blade, so I never did it, um, which, you know. Uh, great resaw capacity, uh, two horsepower motor, uh, the foot brake is awesome, the, just the, the regular magnetic brake is awesome, uh, it stops the blade in three seconds, it's got two dust ports that actually collect dust, um, I don't even have this hooked up to a dust collector yet, but when I open the bottom cabinet doors, the, there's, that's where the dust is, is at the where the dust the dust port um, being able to change the blade without having to take anything off uh, and with the quick tensioner is just awesome uh, the toolless blade drift adjustment for resawing just with the two knobs underneath is just an ingenious design I just love I love I love it it's how could you not it's it's my favorite tool Thank you, Grizzly. I will put this to good use. Okay, back to work. If you're in the market for a serious bandsaw, this model is the G0513X2BF, and I'm blown away by it. I've asked Grizzly to give all of my viewers 10% off, just like normal using the code WALKER10, which should more than cover the cost of freight. Seriously. Mind blown. For some more gratuitous tool porn, watch the brake stop the blade when I turn the power off. That's so cool. I also resawed some walnut and some curly white oak for an upcoming speaker build I'm doing, which is turning out really cool, so be sure you're subscribed to be notified of that when I upload it. Just for kicks, I thought it'd be fun to show changing the blade on my old bandsaw versus my new bandsaw.
There's nothing wrong with the old bandsaw, it still cuts and tracks just fine. There isn't any vibration or anything, this new saw is just better. In every single way. Okay, you get the idea. Thanks for watching.